Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Well, good morning and thank you and welcome to the Valder Beebe Show for the first time. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, we're broadcasting live nationally here in from Dallas, Texas, and you have a chance to tell people about Do You Believe in Fairy Tales? <laughs> You know, as a kid, I grew up uh, watching and, and sort of being obsessed with Disney, and I thought that's what fairy tales were. And it was only as I got older that I started to realize that Disney had kind of raided all these fairy tales from, you know, the Grimm's Brothers and Hans Christian Andersen and, and all these writers that had written a much richer version of good and evil, where they were more in balance, and sometimes the evil characters won, and sometimes the good characters won. And so I wanted to, those were the fairy tales I believed in, and those were the fairy tales that I wanted to give kids. And that's kind of where the School for Good and Evil was born, this attempt to, to really create balance between the two sides. The School for Good and Evil series has sold more than 1.5 million copies, I've been told, and it's soon to be a motion picture. Is that true? Yep. <laughs> Luckily, the books have sort of gone all over the world and found their kind of global readership and, and the movies on the way. So, you know, by the time the series is done, I probably have, have a couple more books left. Uh, then, you know, the movies will be out and I'll have a, a different kind of life. Okay, Bill, you're showing, a, uh, we'll say, the truth about fairy tales. What are some of the things of truth that we're going to see? You know, I think we're so used to only following the hero, you know, like, um, and we, we fall into this template of, it's always going to be happily ever after because we have identified this is the good guy. The good guy always wins, right? So it doesn't matter what choices they make. It doesn't matter what they do. They're guaranteed a happy ending. And so what a real fairy tale is, is a survival guide to life that sort of gives you a, an equal chance at the villain winning and the hero winning and, and may the best man win or woman. So ultimately what I'm doing in the School for Good and Evil is saying, here's the good school, here's the evil school. You're going to love people in both of them. I'm not going to tell you who to root for. It's up to you to choose. And, and it's forcing kids and adults to really take a good look at, at why they root for the people they do. What makes a good character? What makes you fall in love with somebody? So will it be a balance? Will it be as many good fairy tales as evil, or one will outweigh the other? Ultimately, I follow both equally. And so the question is just you know the way that Game of Thrones sort of captivates us and that we don't really know who the good guys and bad guys are anymore. Same thing in my books, you know, and, and it, it, it puts the pressure on you as the reader to really sort of assess what, what values matter to you. You know, who do you want to survive? And ultimately, you know, the question of who survives uh, comes down to, to who makes the best choices. The books that are written, are they for adults or teens or children? Who's the target audience? Well, the thing for fairy tales is they belong to everybody. So ultimately, you know, they work for kids. They, they sort of have a, a kid's feel to them, of course, because, you know, I come from the world of, of the original fairy tales and Disney, which designed those stories for kids and about kids. But ultimately, I wanted to write a story that everybody could love. And, and what's made the series successful is that, you know, when kids read them, they get sort of obsessed, and then they make their parents read them, and then the parents get obsessed. So, you know, I really wanted to capture the essence and the attraction of real fairy tales. So one of the interesting facts that I read about you is like you almost created your own major when you were in Harvard, a Harvard of fairy tales? I was really determined to get to the bottom of what, what the genre of fairy tales really was, you know, because I'd grown up only with the Disney ones. And so I didn't realize that those had been kind of stolen and turned around. Um, and so when I was at Harvard, I really focused on you know, trying to, to understand my childhood from a different point of view and the stories that I didn't get and why kids get the Disney versions and don't get the original stories. So that really was uh, what I dedicated my years at Harvard to. You're on a, uh, a nationwide tour. Are you coming to my locale? I'm in, based in Dallas, Texas, even though I'm broadcasting nationally. I will. I always come to Dallas on uh, my book tour because I just I love it. And usually, uh, you know, I do tours at schools and things like that. This time, I'm going to be at the North Texas Teen Book Festival on March 22nd and 23rd, and that's going to be at the Irving Convention Center. Um, so I will be there as always. It's going to be my fifth year uh, that I'm at the festival. So um, you know, that's where where I really meet. I think it's something like 12,000 kids in in one day. So. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty amazing event. 
Well, it's a pretty big event also, too. Thank you so very much for the information. My audience, if they want to find out more about you, is there a place online? Sure. Um, Instagram is, is where I sort of post the most, at, at Somancy on Instagram. I also have my um, author website at somanchainani.net. And uh, for kids who want sort of the interactive universe of the books, there's the website at schoolforgoodandevil.com, which is an amazing kind of treasure trove of activities for kids uh, that revolve around the books once um, they have a chance to read them. So, Manciani, you were a delight to speak with, and I hope you, I wish you the best with your book. I look forward to seeing you in Dallas. Don't be surprised if I come and tap you on your shoulder. Thank you so much. Thanks for being my guest on the Belder BB Show. It's been a pleasure. Okay. Hi, I'm Valder BB. I host the Valder BB Show, broadcast on radio and television. And this is my phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to my phone pouch 